in Hollywood, California. I was doing 14 nightclubs a week. So that How does that work? Like two different yeah, ones a day? Sometimes three, <laughs> okay. sometimes four in one night. A choreographer, Jennifer Lopez, Justin Timberlake, E-40. Oh, the list goes on and Ooh. on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious how you got involved with uh, Polly Shore. Oh, I don't want to be rude or anything, but Miss Warner, you're giving me a semi. How did that come about? <laughs> okay, yeah. So this was... You lived in China for a while, right? Yeah. So uh, toured all over Asia in between tours, lived in Shanghai, China. While touring Asia, while in China, ended up booking uh, the number one most watched television show, The Balan Ho Show with Wang Zhu Jin. Okay, okay, here comes your host, Wang Zhu Jin. Shanghai, China, amazing. Some of the largest nightclubs in the world are there. Mm -hmm. Some of the largest festivals in the world are there. And, and it's a melting pot. So there's like a little bit of everything out there and a little bit of everyone out there. So I spent a lot of money to get out of jail in China. And I think that was the, after that happened, that's when China started cracking down on foreigners, opposed to like turning the other way, um, which they did for so many years. They could knock on, on your door or just choose to open it up and just take you straight to jail. You're playing music too loud, right to jail, right away. You're driving too fast, jail. Slow, jail. No phone calls, I learned that as soon as they threw me in. I was like, I need my phone call. <laughs> like, they laughed at me. <laughs> was there like a language barrier or anything like that while you're in there in, in Chinese? I'm assuming Chinese jail, there's... Uh, just in chi China in general, some of these restaurants, like we'd walk by and they had these big like whiskey barrels almost. And you'd look in the barrels and it's just full of dog heads. Clayton Ross, he owns Shop Yo Bell, which is right around the corner here mm -hmm. on Bijou, here downtown Colorado Springs. It's a fair trade uh, boutique. They sell everything from head to toe, men's and women. Is that what you got? You got what you're wearing right now? Yeah, this is Shop Yo Bell. Nice. Um, he's, he's amazing. My other brother is Casey Ross, and he is a beast of a hard worker and the best guy you'll ever meet. He's uh, one of the main owners of Axe and Yoke Whiskey Distillery that's based out of here in Colorado Springs. They have Axe and Yoke Whiskey House down at the Ivy Wild Building. It's great um, stuff. Where Bristol Brewery is. Mm -hmm. yeah, nice, you've had it. Oh yeah, wanna, for sure. I want to bring some really creative, cool, unique culture and venues to Colorado Springs here. So that is definitely on the, the list of priorities that, that I'm working on. Welcome to the Colorado Springs Business Podcast, where we discuss business principles and provide real life insight into the lives of everyday business owners and entrepreneurs. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe or leave a review wherever you might be listening. Now let's talk business. We interrupt this program to bring you our sponsors, the people who help make this show possible. Dope Tees. Dope Tees is one of our fresh new sponsors that we have for you today. Dope Tees is here to help level up your style game. They're all about killer designs and top-notch quality. Seriously, go check them out. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing Dope Tees right now. This is a tee that I'm wearing that is a dope tee. Episode of the founder and owner of Dope Tees is coming up soon. Be on the lookout. Or it's already here. So go find it. Thank you, Dope Tees, for supporting us and helping us do what we do here at the COS Business Podcast. Curious? Head over to Dope Tees' website right now. That's www dope t e e z dot biz b i z that's www dot d o p e t e e z yes check it out we're thrilled to introduce our newest sponsor pinnacle advanced primary care are you tired of the hassle that comes with traditional health care pinnacle is here to change the game for just 68 dollars a month you get direct access to your primary care physician without the need for insurance co-pays or deductibles yeah you heard that right it's healthcare simplified. The benefits of using Pinnacle Advanced Primary Care is strong doctor-patient relationships. Enjoy extended 30 to 60 minute office visits and get the individualized care you deserve. Convenient access to care. Whether you're at home or travel the world, you can reach out to your local doctor via chat, email, or video visits. Cost-effective treatment. Pinnacle believes in radical transparency, offering you cost-effective care without any hidden fees. So, if you're ready to take control of your health and be an active participant in your healthcare journey, Pinnacle Advanced Primary Care is the way to go. Visit their website at PinnacleAPC.com. That's PinnacleAPC.com. Franchise Succeed. Franchise Succeed brings a wealth of knowledge to the table boasting a team of over six decades of combined experience in franchising and financial planning. They specialize in helping business owners elevate their companies through franchising. What sets them apart? Expertise in multiple industries. Whether you're in retail, finance, or energy exploration, they've got you covered. Tailored strategies. They work closely with their clients to understand the unique needs and goals developing customized investment plans. Ethical approach. Integrity and ethics are at the core of their operations, ensuring they work with only the best and most qualified partners. They can help you. From customer service policies to million dollar marketing programs. They've got the expertise. If you're thinking about franchising your business or need strategic guidance, look no further. 
That's FranchiseSucceed.com. FranchiseSucceed.com. Our next sponsor is a company I like to call, and they like to call themselves too, Planet Planet Duct. Duct. If you're in Colorado Springs and surrounding areas and you haven't heard of Planet Duct, you're missing out. They're not just any air duct cleaning company service. They're NADCA NADCA certified specialist. Here's what sets them apart. Powerful equipment. Their team is highly trained to give your air ducts a cleaning that is literally out of this world. Comprehensive cleaning. From blowing the dust from your duct vents to cleaning the truck lines, they've got it all covered. They even clean the return drop blower wheel and filter compartment. Safety checks. After all that cleaning, they do a free carbon monoxide check to ensure your system is safe. Time efficient. Depending on your home size and project scope, they typically take about three to five hours to get the job done, and they get it done right. So if you're looking to breathe a little easier, give Planet Duct a call. Trust us, your lungs will thank you. Visit their website for more information at planetduck.com. Our next sponsor is Recon Marketing. And you know what? I'm going to tell you why Recon Marketing rocks. Their expertise. They know the ins and out of marketing like the back of their hand. They have many of years of experience in doing this, and you can trust them. Free consultations. Not sure if they're a right fit? They offer a free consolation to help you decide. And if that wasn't enough, the co-host of this episode today right now is Marcus Alvarado, who is the founder of Recon Marketing. Custom solutions. Every business is unique, and Recon Marketing tailors their services to meet your specific needs. Results driven. They focus on delivering real measurable results. So connect with them today. Get your free consultation today at reconmarketingservices.com. That's reconmarketingservices.com. So now we're going to dive into this amazing episode. Welcome back to the COS Business Podcast. Today we're here with Rocky Ross, who is a DJ, does tattoos, and, but your main thing is DJ, right? Uh, well, I, it depends on the season, but yeah, well, main thing is DJing, but I've always kind of juggled a lot of things, uh, and a lot of the things complement each other. But yeah, I, I definitely enjoy uh, and the heck out of DJing and, and been doing that for 26 years now, and so it's, it's still not old, it's still a lot of fun, and... Uh, yeah, love it, man. Yeah, yeah and, and you're you're a native to Colorado Springs specifically, right? I am, yeah. Born and raised out here. Um, did a lot of traveling um, with entertainment, dance and DJing through school. And then once school got out, uh, yeah, hit, hit the road, moved to uh, Los Angeles, Hollywood, California. Uh, I was on the fence between Miami and Hollywood. I'm, I'm sure glad that I ended up moving to Hollywood, California, because that opened the doors for all types of stuff. That's when I was... Uh, mainly in my bread and butter what was dance and I was grew up up you know a dancer competing and oh, really? rolled into professional dance and and then uh, Hollywood opened up those doors tremendously but I was still DJing so so uh, yeah like the first the first job as soon as I, I got out there was working for Polly Shore at the world's famous comedy store yeah so I was DJing at the comedy store for him every week so I got to uh, meet and DJ for all, all the the famous com- comedians that I, I love, you know, Jim Carrey, the Waynes Brothers, Kevin Hart, the list just goes on. It was cool to see them on a weekly basis. But but yeah, so <laughs> to answer your question, yes. That native, is awesome. But, yeah, <laughs> but ended up mo- moving right out of high school. But yeah, moved away for about 22 years from Colorado Springs. So oh. I was gone for a long time, but I always come back every year. I always came back every year and um, to throw events because I have a, event companies. I've been doing that mm-hmm. since 97 now as well. It goes to show my age. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, always juggling uh, producing events, mm-hmm. um, da- the dance career, uh, deeply involved in that, and uh, and, and uh, DJing and art. It's all kind of revolving around the, the, the hip-hop culture because that's like the elements of hip-hop, which is so creative, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was definitely deeply, deeply involved in turntablism, DJing, you know, breakdancing, um, graffiti art. You know, mural, and that's what got me into tattooing and stuff, uh, and then production of of events, like throwing events from the sc- the ground up. So those those were some of my my mains, and still are some of my mains. Other than dance, I retired from dance six years ago, um, but I could still drop a head spin and some crazy yes. moves from time okay. to time. But, uh, <laughs> That really it brought brought me all over the world. So I was able to to tour at young ages uh, through dance and compete at young ages. Opened up a lot of different doors. So I choreographed for Jennifer Lopez, Justin Timberlake, E Forty. Uh, oh, the list goes on and Ooh. on. Yeah, <laughs> lots of different uh, amazing artists that I had the pleasure of working with and working for, uh, and then also um, 
choreographed for years and taught uh, um, in different studios and started my own dance company and, and whatnot. So that um, opened the doors and let me, uh, you know, see the world through through entertainment and uh, dance. So that was great. So while doing that, I was, you know, juggling turntablism and DJing and wow. producing events, <clears throat> um, doing commissioned graffiti art murals um, and tattooing. So kind of, I'm not kind of all over the place with <laughs> with yeah. all this but um it's all in the arts though yeah 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 so started uh, a lot of that, like like djing started around uh well started in 1997 and that's also when i started my first event production company uh uh the the first like big event i, I should say that i threw um it was a big break dance competition wrap around the building graffiti art exhibition uh uh mc battles um, awesome. It, the whole el nine elements of hip hop type of thing, uh, but that event was called Universal Jam Fest, and uh, it was it was such a success. I decided to name my company Universal Jams Entertainment. Nice. Uh, so that's that you know that started in the '90s, and um, there was all as that grew, there was all kinds of little branches and spinoffs, and so I started like Rocky Ross Events and Double R Productions and different n names and teams for different style events. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, all uh, the, it all complements each other so well. You know, the events, dance, DJing. You know, so For so sure. I kind of just juggled all those, and I think everything has a slow season. Uh, mm -hmm. It can have a slow season. So that's kind of when I would like dodge and weave, and, and um, also I'd get burnt out sometimes. I'd just be dancing so much, so many d dance gigs, or so many DJ gigs, or throwing too many events. You know. And I'd get burnt out, so it's like, okay, just ease back on that a little bit and shift over to this other uh, passion of mine. Mm -hmm. So that always helped, you know. And I, I think even like if you're a professional basketball player getting paid millions, and that's all you do day in day night, that that's gonna get uh, tiring, and you're gonna burn, gonna get burnt out, and like kind of lose the passion a little bit. Mm -hmm. At least that's the way I see it. So it's kind of fun to have a. A variety of passions uh at least for my brain because if i just had one thing i think it just wouldn't work for me personally <laughs> i feel you yeah, yeah. and yeah. so with those companies uh what so you you had the universal jams is that that's what it was mm -hmm. and uh how, how was the growth of that company like it, it kind of just started taking off and then like wh what's the evolution of that yeah so i uh, started off throwing one-offs so specialty events big specialty one-off events so those went very well mm -hmm. and then started hearing, you know, from friends and, and followers that you need to do weeklies at and venues. There's, there's not enough for us to do out here in these specific scenes, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so then I started doing weeklies at, and uh, nightclubs and venues and bars. Um, and then, yeah, before you know, I'm doing six nightclubs a week followed by a big end of the month competition or event of some sort um so so yeah it was a, a lot of a lot of uh my career with event production there was a lot of cities and a lot of phases where i was doing anywhere from like six nightclubs to 14 nightclubs a week like in, in hollywood california i was doing 14 nightclubs a week so that how means, does that work like two different yeah, ones a day sometimes three <laughs> okay. sometimes four and one night yeah so tonight i'm doing an event and club uh, Basque and over at uh, you know four events a, a week mm -hmm. you know um so i'd have i had a um you know big office in in um beverly hills actually and so i had different teams for different um uh, events and and different locations and yeah so we just got run different style events all the time and yeah that's uh talk about exhausting that, that, that yeah. burnt me out was it profitable time. yeah it was, it was <laughs> okay I, I would assume yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i just i can't imagine d doing that <clears throat> for for the rest of my life yeah. mm -hmm. so I always have to it burns you out like out of anything that i've ever done and still do the events really are exhausting and mm -hmm. uh, it just takes a toll on mind body and soul so i, I always kind of step back from events and come back in and step back because okay. i love it as well it's yeah, like yeah. absolutely amazing i thoroughly enjoy producing events especially from the ground up mm -hmm. i mean i think one of the most beautiful things about throwing and producing your own event is um the negotiation process when you go in for example you go into like a big nightclub or a warehouse or whatnot you finish your your pitch you land the, the deal 
and you'll you do a walk around. You start brainstorming what type of event am I going to produce here or throw mm-hmm. here, right? So you do the walk around, and I always find a specific spot in that venue or warehouse, and uh, it's usually in the corner, so I get a bird's eye view of the whole venue, right? <clears throat> and I'm standing, and it's usually you know afternoon is usually when these proposals happen. So you stand in that corner and you're looking at this empty warehouse or this empty nightclub, and okay, it's, it's crickets right now, and it, it's empty. You're brainstorming, and then the day of the event, the night of the event, when it's all success and the club or the venue is packed, I always make time to go to that same exact corner, stand in that same exact area, and look in it. And I did all this. This okay, is all, yeah. this is amazing, <laughs> and people are having fun and success, and we got loads of entertainment coming up and off the stage, and uh, that to me is like the best part of it. That moment right there is the best part of it. You know? It's awesome. You see what you create, you know, because a lot of times you get so busy, especially with events. It's like you don't take a second. You just need to take a second to do that. I, I think that's the best thing. About that's awesome. Yeah. Events, yeah. That's good that you do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm curious uh, how you got involved with uh, Polly Shore. How did that How did that <clears throat> come about? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so this was, I want to say it was like week one or week two. Um, I'm living on. Crescent Heights and Sunset, uh, heart of West Hollywood. Okay. Um, uh, my roommate is pretty well connected out there, and she wants to throw an apartment party. <clears throat> so um, I have my turntable set up in the living room, and in comes like B-list celebs and, and just an awesome bunch of individuals. And uh, was it, is it Bobby Lee, the... Yeah. I was just about to ask yeah. you if you if you met Bobby Lee. Yeah, so Bobby Lee came favorites. in first actually, and uh, and I was like, that's kind of cool. And then the yeah, and then like 15 minutes later, here comes Paulie Shore. Yeah. And uh, throughout the evening, other there was like you know some musicians and football players, and I can't recall the names. But anyway, um, so of course you know I'm like fresh into Hollywood, and I want to show off, you know. So I'm showing off my skills on the turntables. I'm cutting and scratching, and Paulie Shore is just. Um, from what it seems what's up dude floored. he's like <laughs> all into it he's like totally into all the cuts and scratching and mixing and mixology <laughs> nice. of it all. and he was uh you know throwing out some uh, some awesome compliments and all into it and and uh he says uh um have you ever thought about uh djing at the comedy store i'm fresh to hollywood i don't know what the comedy store is mm-hmm. and uh he uh, and also, it sounded like you said, like, comic book store. It's loud. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, you know, I say, I've never heard of the comic book store. <laughs> <laughs> never heard of the comic book store. Is is that, like, do DJs spin in the comic book store? And <laughs> he starts laughing. He's like, you're serious? He's like, the comedy store, the world's famous comedy store. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I still don't know what that is. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm down. That sounds fun. Yeah, that's that's cool. He's like, cool, yeah. You know, and then we had a conversation about that. And then, then I get hired as... As his resident over there, and that's the awesome, store. man. Yeah, him and uh, a good buddy of mine, Josh Nassar. He kind of ran the the shows out there, and he okay. was amazing. And uh, it was great to work with all of them. But yeah, yeah, I was gonna bring up the Bobby Lee thing because I know that Paulie Shore took him on on tour and like kind of brought him into like brought, help helped him out. So I was like, oh, awesome. That, that's yeah. why I was curious. I was gonna ask that, but you said it before I even got to yeah. it. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, there's so many stories out there. So yeah, so how does how does uh, work, working at the comedy store uh, look like? Is is that just like any other vin- venue? No, it's very different. Like DJing for for comedians and comedy shows is very very different. Uh, some com- they they want their intro song. They they might have uh, special bits and skits throughout their their comedy mm. where they say i need you to play this when i when i say that like a sound effect yeah okay and, and, or or a song okay um I, I need you to do this when i when i say this and you know so some of them was like extremely intricate which was fun um so sometimes you'd play like 15 songs through their set oh, okay. and sometimes they they were just like you do you you know and, mm-hmm. and that was fun too so um but yeah it, it was different um uh, but yeah, it definitely opened up a lot of doors, and uh, there was lots of mansion parties spinoffs from that because you got to meet these comedians and their people, and they say, "Hey, I want you to DJ, you know, my birthday party or my wife's uh, whatever anniversary or whatever." Um, so lots of uh, parties in the Hollywood Hills spinoff from from the comedy store, and I was DJing at the Laugh Factory out there and the mm-hmm. Improv. Um, awesome. So some famous comedy clubs out there, yeah. and then I, as you know, I was a, a nightclub promoter out there, so. I would take these comedians as well and to fill the doors earlier 
um, I would uh, often, um, weekly for years, I was doing my own comedy shows. And I'm not a comedian or a host, so I would hire comedians to host the show yeah. and to pack the doors or fill the, fill the doors early on. I would do a comedy show from like 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Usually I would, we would open the doors or people start arriving around, you know, 10, 30, 11, you know, depending on the club. So I would be able to fill it with a comedy show first. And by the time people are arriving, there's already a vibe. Mm-hmm. There's already people there. Mm-hmm. So I would do my own comedy shows for, for years out there. So that was kind of cool being involved with the comedy clubs because I'm like, how else can I uh, fill these nightclubs? And that worked wonderfully. Yeah. So that that's fun. great, man. Yeah. That's an, that's an awesome story. We're going to clip that. And, you know, put it for SEO, be like, what is a good title for that? Be like, it's a comedy store, DJ, I don't know. We'll, I'll <laughs> yeah, think of okay. yeah, cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that'll, that'll, that, that, that'll be a fun clip to, to produce, but that's, I don't even know why I'm bringing that up, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a, that's an awesome a story and there's probably a, a lot more we could go into that, but we'll, we'll move on to a, a new, a new topic. Yeah. Um, I, I know because you've told me before you lived in China for a while, right? Yeah. So, uh, toured all over Asia. Um, but, uh, China, uh, basically where I ended up staying put for a little bit in between tours. Um, but yeah, I lived in Shanghai, China. That was the, the, the main spot that I lived because while touring Asia, um, you know, J- Japan, the Philippines, Thailand, Macau, um, and mm. all over China. Um, while in China, I ended up booking uh, the number one most watched television show, uh, The Balan Ho Show with Wang Zhujian. Okay, okay, here comes your host, Wang Zhujian. We'll, we'll cut to a clip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what that yeah, is. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was a, a really fun TV show um, out there in Shanghai, China. And it was really cool because... When I got off, I was touring all over Asia, and when I got offered from this big television series, um, they said, you know, they, you know, great pay and everything, but I was like, I'm going to have to stop touring, and I can't also be resident at any of these clubs in between tours. Um, but they said, well, we'll, we'll, we'll shift things around for you. Um, they were just so cool and laid back about everything, so they really shifted a lot of things around for me So, because I had all these tours and whatnot and they said okay what if we film like six shows um a month and we'll do it all in one day so we'll do it on that so so if you're touring we'll pay for you to fly from that to wherever you are we'll fly you back to shanghai to record and we'll do six shows in one day which fine with me uh it's exhausting but but yeah we'd film about six shows uh, and one day, sometimes we'd start at like six, seven in the morning, and sometimes we'd finish at four, five in the morning. So it, it was wow. a lot of work, but we knocked all out, and that gave me the <laughs> opportunity to continue touring. So they did a lot for me. They bent over backwards for me, and, and uh, so I worked with them in that television show for about three and a half, four years. Um, filmed, you know, three hundred and something shows. Um, so that was really cool, that and got good. to meet and work with loads of celebrities on that tv show it's kind of like um ellen digenous show mixed with the saturday night live so it's really fun show that's That's kind of cool fun (laughs) hosts um and uh so that was really cool and um and that city is just one of my favorite cities in the world shanghai china amazing some of the largest nightclubs in the world are there Mm -hmm. some of the largest festivals in the world are there and and it's a melting pot so there's like a little bit of everything out there and a little bit of everyone out there. You meet so many amazing individuals from all over the world and everyone's just hustlers in their own ways out there. Lots of entertainment, lots of opportunity. And not only in Shanghai, but all over Asia, especially China, uh, they, they pay for their talent. They pay them well. And there's lots of entertainment for everything. If there's, if there's a, a store or a business grand opening, there's entertainment there. If there's a celebration with any type of business or venue, there's lots of entertainment there. And with that entertainment, they don't they don't cut corners. There's amazing lights, amazing staging, okay. la- amazing production. The DJ booths move up and down. They go in nice. circles. <laughs> there's <laughs> flares and fire and smoke, and, and there's huge crowds, and there's bottle service everywhere. Most of the nightclubs, they don't have bars for you to walk up to it's all bottle service so it's all really quite amazing and 
uh, pretty. I would have never thought that. about that or never known about that. Yeah. Like, why yeah. do you think that we just don't know about that kind of stuff? As, as Americans, I guess, because <laughs> I don't think the average American knows that. Yeah, I, I don't think a lot of Americans, generally speaking, spend a lot of time in China. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, and uh, it is a different world. It's it's completely different. I mean, from A to Z, everything's completely different. Um, I, and I'd say about fifty percent of um, from my experience and a lot of uh, friends, fifty percent of uh, China Chinese individuals love Americans, and fifty percent. Of Chinese individuals hate Americans. Okay. <laughs> so going through everyday life out there, uh, whether it be the tours or just walking around your own city, uh, you, you encounter both of those every every single day. But yeah. all in all, it was great experience. Yeah, seven and a half years of my life I lived out there, and um, and it was um, I was averaging about fourteen gigs a week. Again? Yeah. I, <laughs> that, without these were gigs. Oh, that, gigs. Okay. Yeah. So these were like DJ gigs. So I was. Planes, trains, and automobiles. I was <laughs> flying, dri driving. I was on trains all the time. I was mm -hmm. uh, just hustling and bustling. And then, of course, I was juggling everything else. I was juggling tattooing. I was juggling producing events. I was throwing a lot of events when I wasn't even there. I, you know, I had a production company that was throwing events for me. And um, it's kind of the wild, wild west out there. You, you know, there's wild, a lot. Wild, wild east. Wild, wild, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. By yeah, that. No, remember the wild, wild west. Yeah, yeah, here, yeah. there's no. What I mean by that, no rules. And of okay. course, there are rules. It's a communist country, um, but uh, but you know, after hours, like nothing closes and uh, and it's just nonstop. So there's you know some of these after hour events that I threw on a weekly basis. I would start my after hour event around eight nine p.m. and um, for the individuals that you know maybe had to work the next day um mm -hmm. but that event sometimes would be 8 9 p.m and then it would go until about two sometimes three o'clock the next day mm -hmm. so, on a weekly basis so it's exhausting that you know i didn't have to be there for all of that but it was rocking and rolling for years um so it was it's just that's just one of the many there's lots of like after hours and crazy events happening everywhere all the time and uh, a lot of that stuff just doesn't happen in, in america so it was just like yeah, interesting. maybe Vegas or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, Vegas, but like, just like di different. I mean, Vegas is a whole different beast, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just, just yeah. it's just so different, you know. Like everywhere you go, everywhere you look, it's just so so different. Yeah. That's, wow. how, how the hell do you get involved in in all that? Like, that seems like such a, a random thing to get in, involved in. And also, how do you how do you get books so frequently? Like, where does that come from? I I've always just marketed and branded the the hell, hell out of myself okay shameless you got rocky ross on your head <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah shameless self-promotion is okay. what i like to call it um but uh yeah i've always i mean there's 365 days a year uh probably about 300 if not more i'm i'm posting about one of my brands which is smart that's what we do right mm -hmm. you know you have always a brand market yourself as much as possible you were doing this before social media too yeah Oh yeah, yeah. I was, uh, you know, grassroots flyering. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then and then MySpace came. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then I was, you know, flooding the the everyone's pages with with my promotions and marketing in the kindest way I can without annoying them too much. Mm -hmm. And then the people that were annoyed too much, it's uh, delete. Yeah. <laughs> it's, sorry. And they'll, 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 they'll delete themselves. You know? Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that, that's how it is. I mean, you, you guys know as well. You have to brand and market yourself all the time mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur or branding your own business. That's just what it takes to do it. But, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. So I love it. Yeah. It's, so you were, you were touring, you were touring as a DJ <clears throat> when you were in China and then that kind of led to just more things out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, so I got booked, um, from a friend in Vegas cause I used to do lots of work in Vegas. I used to run party buses back and forth from, from Vegas to LA. So I'd bring <laughs> party buses from LA, Hollywood, California, and I'd have accounts in Vegas of nightclubs. So they'd give me free hotels and, and free this, that, and the other. And I'd bring, you know, anywhere from like, you know, 60 to 160 people out there. How long is that drive? Um, it's um, depending on the driver. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's yeah. Uh, like uh, two, three hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. So people are just getting getting pre-gaming essentially on yeah the oh yeah yeah <laughs> but um but anyway so lots of lots of work in vegas so uh one of my connections out there hit me up about this uh asia tour and they said they need they needed a turntablist okay. someone that they could cut and scratch mm -hmm. and they needed it now uh, it's good pay 
sin sin video over right now, but there were specifics. So spent all night that night after after um, throwing an event, um, putting together like a DJ uh, reel for him. Okay, uh, and uh, boom, got the gig. Uh, at least you know to, they were gonna fly me out to Vegas and see if see if it's gonna work. But it looked pretty promising. So I got out there um, to Vegas, got the gig with with the dance team out there. But I also I upsold myself as a dancer because you know there, a lot of the the tour was lots of dancing and dancers. So I said, I'm a dance choreographer. Here's my credentials. You know, choreograph for all these people. Um, if you hire me as the main dance choreographer for this show, uh, I could do both and like cut the price down for you a little bit. So I could be your your DJ producer, <laughs> um, but I'll also be your dancer and dance choreographer. Um, and I'll lower the prices down a little bit. And I did that with lots of tours like that. I just mm-hmm. up- upsell myself. Um, I was doing like commissioned graffiti art murals for their props and backgrounds and stuff like that too. So just anywhere I could. But yeah, so that specific one, that you know, that's how that worked. Mm-hmm. So I ended up being dancer, dance choreographer, and the turntablist. And so it all came from a connection in Vegas. Then we, we hit Asia and we started touring throughout Asia and then booked, you know, residents at clubs and booked the TV show and, and uh, yeah, and eventually ended up uh, opening up a tattoo shop out there, Good Vibrations Tattoos, and uh, of course the production companies throwing weekly events all over. So yeah, I just had a blast with all that and doing graffiti art murals out there on the side. So yeah, you opened it in China. Yeah, in between two nightclubs that I managed and DJed at. As so, so were you out there on a visa? Like like how do you yeah, open a business yeah. in a different country? Yeah, so it start it started off with a, a legal. <laughs> I say this because everyone works illegally out there. Okay, but yeah, I yeah. started off with a legal uh, work visa, entertainment uh, visa. Um, milked that until I hopped, until those tours ended. And then I was on the same boat as everyone else out there working illegally. Mm. So, yeah, we were working illegally um, for most of the, the time out there until I got busted and thrown in jail. Oh, damn. Because really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... So yeah, they they had been uh, watching me for some time, and instead of uh, slap you know, slapping the wrist or, or telling me from the get go, saying no 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 you can't do this type of thing, they watched me for years. Oh man, put the case on, on you. Yeah, and then yep, and, and and it turned into a case, and it, it was a very expensive case, and yeah, they they locked me up because of that. So I spent a lot of money to get out of jail in China, and I think that was the after that happened, that's when China started cracking down on foreigners foreigners. More so uh, okay. yeah. uh, opposed to like turning the other way, mm-hmm. um, which they did for so many years. Because that's what I was saying. It's like kind of the wild, wild west out there. The mm-hmm. foreigners could kind of just get away with anything. Well, not anymore. And, uh, and uh, you know, that's what happened to me and a lot of my friends. And, and it's a communist country, so they don't need a, they can knock on, on your door or just choose to open it up and, and just take you straight to jail. You know, there's it, no search. Without a war- warrant, yeah. No, no <laughs> search warrants out there needed. And, no phone calls. I learned that as soon as they threw me in. I was like, I need my phone call. <laughs> like, they laughed at me. <laughs> oh, oh, poor foreigner. <laughs> yeah. This is not America. You do not get a phone call. Oh, geez. Yeah. So that was an experience, but yeah. <laughs> so you know what China Joe looks or feels like? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, not not fun. And it's like, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> was there like a language barrier or anything like that while you're in there? And, and Chinese, I'm assuming Chinese jail, there's not many probably Americans. In oh, there. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just in China, China in general, um, uh, there's lots, the large cities, lots of um, English speaking individuals all over the place. But at the same time, there's lots of lo- locals that don't speak a lick of um, English. So, um, and I was, I kept debating throughout the years that I lived there, am I going to learn this language, spend the, the time, money, and energy to yeah, learn this yeah. language, like many of my friends were. And I was very jealous of that because I'm like, I want to learn how to just, you know. You were doing 14 gigs a week, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or am I going to spend that extra time, money, and energy into bettering my career? Because most of the gigs, 90% of the gigs uh, I had, there was always a translator. There was always a tour manager. Mm-hmm. There was always an English-speaking individual on their side. Yeah. Um, so it's like, do I really need to invest the time, money, and energy? Or do I really need to invest the time, money, and energy into bettering my career? So I chose to better my career. So mm-hmm. I was, yeah, I was just rock and roll and uh, over Rocky, rock and Rocky, <laughs> Rocky, rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I had a blast. And then we got pregnant. We got pregnant out in Asia. Um, 
my ex-girlfriend Harriet. She was also a singer dancer out there, and we toured together. Um, and and uh, we got pregnant, and wow. we said, where are we gonna move? Because Shanghai, China, being one of the largest cities in the world, uh, in my eyes, is just not the best place to raise a, a child or at least a newborn. Um, so we said, what are we gonna do? Where are we gonna move? We got to figure this out. So I, um, we had lots of connections in Thailand as well. And also that's one of my, my favorite uh, vacation destinations. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just gorgeous out there. And we thought, you know, <clears throat> we could probably do very well in, uh, in Thailand. So uh, I was working on this deal, trying to buy this four-story nightclub on Kosamui Beach front out there. Um, oh, you were doing well out there, huh? Yeah, I was having fun, rock yeah. and rolling, man. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so I was trying to buy this this nightclub out there and getting close to uh, making the deal happen. So we ended up going out there and uh, spending a little time, and I was doing some shopping around as well, like house shopping and trying to figure this deal out. And then the there were some red flags in the deal. Didn't end up buying the, the nightclub in Thailand. And at this point, we have to figure out something soon because – you can't fly on a, a pregnant gal cannot fly on an airplane up, um, over a certain amount of months. It's not, not good for the, the for kiddo. Sure. So she needed to get on a plane and, and figure something out. I'm still touring. So she ended up um, saying, why don't we just move back to Colorado Springs? And I'm, I was like, uh, well, I, you know, I, I prefer like a large city where we could actually make it because there's not a lot of opportunity for us in Colorado Springs. So why don't we move back to like, LA or New York or Miami or or somewhere else you know that that we could hit the ground running a little bit mm -hmm. and she was like what let's just do let's just do Colorado Springs and you know me laugh out loud there's no opportunity for us but um I do have a beautiful family out here mm -hmm. um so she was like yeah we'll just at least have the kiddo out there and then from from there you know we could kind of figure it out type of thing so I'm still touring she moves back um staying with my my family wow. and um and just got to finish this tour and then i i get back in time to, for for my beautiful ruby ross to be born <laughs> and um and yeah i had our fir first kiddo and um and then not long after that second kiddo so i have two beautiful girls out here and um we ended up just staying um, and figuring it out there was more opportunity out here than i thought mm -hmm. and uh it's not dream gigs anymore i mean some of it is dream gigs but it's not huge extravagant huge production events and festivals and stuff like that. But I can still do what I love and still be a family man and um, and make it work. So I'm still tattooing out here all, mm -hmm. all the time and doing North End, permissioned right? Old North End mm -hmm. tattoos. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> put a, put a yeah Old North End scan. tattoos. Beautiful <laughs> family over there. Um, and it's right here downtown. So mm -hmm. so love doing that. Um, and, you know, still DJing like crazy out here. I have my... Raw Squad DJs as well, so I have um, some awesome DJs that work for the company, and we do rentals as well. So we rent out sound and lighting and stage, and uh, and and uh, we have photo booths and three sixty photo booths and nice. you know all all the things you know cold spark machines. So we do the the rentals are uh, and then uh, you know throw, throwing the events with Double R Productions, uh, Ra um, Universal Jams Entertainment, Rocky Ross Events, um, been able to use that out here and that's working well and uh and then our our restorations i've always dabbled in restoring vehicles mm -hmm. so started that back up again when uh when COVID happens um because no events <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah also although I, I started throwing events immediately when COVID happened yeah okay uh, I was throwing parking lot events it was wonderful nice. awesome yeah. but, that's um, great that was a need there was a need for that there was. Was, yeah, was yeah yeah like, people weren't getting out like yeah i think that was that was even though it was probably, uh, I don't know if it was like you were breaking rules or whatever, you know, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, it was kind of like during that time, it was like, it was crazy, yeah. Who's going to tell us, tell tell us what to do? We're in a free country, you know, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. It was a little wild, wild west out here, yeah, yeah for a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, so I'm able to juggle all those things out here, and I'm like, do I, do we really need to move to a large city? Um, you know, less culture out here, it's pretty conservative, but, mm -hmm. you know, we could still make it happen, right? And it is a beautiful city, and, and it's it growing more so than ever before, you know? Yeah. I remember all throughout those years that I was gone, you know, 20 plus years I was gone, every time I'd come back to visit or throw events, uh, you know, bumping to old friends and like, 
just just give it a couple years it's gonna blow up cover it a couple years oh give it five years it's gonna be a huge you know and they said that for 20 some years and mm -hmm. like it's it's not you know still not yeah it's, and it's still and it's still way behind you know mm -hmm. color spring but i will say this last five years it's really yeah. blown yeah, up and grown years, yes. more than i've ever seen it grow before mm -hmm. and it really does have a lot of things going for Colorado Springs right now as far as you know the uh, a lot but as far as you know the scenes that we're interested in you know it's mm -hmm. really starting starting to pick up and I'm really enjoying it so yeah and cool. you're from here and I notice people who are from here have a different perspective like than people who are tran transplants you know? yeah, yeah yeah there's a little different perspective but it's also easy to forget that Colorado Springs is the 37th biggest city in the United States people don't realize that so it's still a big city you know <laughs> I did not know that yeah wow that's yeah, cool yeah yeah right under Kansas City so, yeah <laughs> which okay. is where I'm from so <laughs> ah, nice, nice yeah but Kansas City is a lot bigger than a Colorado Springs just because of the metro area is a lot bigger gotcha so okay. it allows for a bigger downtown and everything but yeah yeah okay. bigger arts district and we were also talking about like Shanghai and like these, oh, yeah. these are like some yeah, of the biggest cities in the world so <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's Shanghai? And I'm, I'm assuming it's bigger than even New York City, right? I Shanghai's think so. huge. Oh yeah, it's like yeah. 20 million, I think. It's probably. Ridi it's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> I forgot the exact number, but yeah, it's it's. We'll, we'll put ridiculous. the stats right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, please do. Um, yeah, so, um, like, just Shanghai, China alone. I mean, it's nothing but skyscrapers everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, it, out of all, I I moved almost every year when I was out there in between. Because they're always selling the apartment, you know, I was, I was renting apartments. Yeah. And then we'd have to move because it's being sold again. So we'd move to the next one. Um, I think the the highest I lived was the 36th floor. The mm -hmm. lowest I lived was the 23rd floor. So I was always always living in these skyscrapers. It's just so different, you know, different way of living. Yeah. Um, but you look out these windows of these apartments that we live in and... Uh, or any skyscraper out there, and it's it's just skyscrapers for as far as the eye could see. It's just nothing but skyscrapers. I think Tom, that's beautiful. Some people don't like it. It is absolutely but, yeah. <laughs> gorgeous. It's, uh, it's so beautiful. And the mm -hmm. architecture is is just incredible out there. Um, but just in one city like Shanghai, the amount of skyscrapers, take all the skyscrapers in all of America. It doesn't even come close to just one city, one of the large cities like mm -hmm. Beijing or Hong Kong or or Shanghai, China, or Suzhou, or any of these cities. They're just, it's massive, massive cities, and the architecture is mind-blowing. It's crazy. And it's almost like they, mm -hmm. they compete against each other to make, when they build a new building uh, in China, it's, it's not cookie-cutter at all. Mm -hmm. They're all so, so different. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very, very unique, and they're flying in architecture from all over the world to build these extravagant, you know, uh, creative building so it's really you know quite this site just to like go a couple blocks and say wow wow different amazing buildings everywhere you go but yeah that was interesting it seems Compare. like it'd be a bit scary it's overwhelming and it can be scary from time to time especially the tours when you're you know when you're touring a random city and uh you, you know you get there you want to i always want to explore i'm not gonna Me too hit a different city and stay in my hotel room. Sure. So I always hit the streets and, and go out and explore and try to uh, have some new experiences, meet people and try new food and have some fun adventures. Um, but some of those adventures were, yeah, def definitely scary. And I got in some crazy street fights and brawls and stuff out there. Really? Um, yeah, in China. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Been they don't all know kung fu, probably. Yeah. No, I'm just <laughs> no, no, but yeah, like I said, fifty percent of them, uh, and, uh, you know, love us, and fifty percent of them hate us from from my experiences. But um, but yeah, some of that was r really scary. Not only China, but di different areas, just random cities that you're flying into, mm -hmm. starting to <laughs> explore, and like, oh, I should not be here. I yeah, yeah. Be here. I need to get out of here right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's some places like that in New York too. You know, where it feels feels exactly the same. You know? Oh yeah, all over America. Yeah, for yeah. sure. How was the culture difference between Asia and, and America? Obviously, these are two huge superpowers, but like, I'm sure culture was huge. Oh yeah. Like, did you get any culture shock when you were originally going over there to Asia? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially rolling through the the smaller cities had more culture shock because the smaller cities, like I said, you know. Wild Wild West, Wild Wild East, just so different. And they live so different, you know, like, you, so you'd get off, get off the plane and start rolling into the city. And I remember the first, like, smaller city 
um, yeah, driving down the road, there was thousands because it was a long road. You're rolling into the, their their downtown, right? And there was like thousands of skinned dogs hanging outside of businesses. It's a part of the way they, yeah, they, yeah mm-hmm. but but uh, that's a real thing. I always thought that was like, is that a real thing? You know, and uh, and it sure is, and unfortunately, and um, but there was hanging hanging dogs and hanging cats, and and uh, it was just. To me, it was just yeah, definitely culture shock and definitely <laughs> yeah, disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and definitely in, in my eyes wrong. I'm like, what the heck is this? This is terrible. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, um, I remember th- that day later that evening, you know, going to the, the venue for sound check. We did sound check and then we're hungry. So um and uh tour managers and that on that specific tour, you know, um were busy at the time. Those were our translators. So of course we have to kind of explore and find our, our own food you know we have mm-hmm. our per diem and stuff but we're walking around and yeah like some of these restaurants like we'd walk by and they had these big like whiskey barrels almost and you'd look in the barrels and it's just full of dog heads what uh, yeah just like dog heads and a specific they, breed or different breeds or different breeds they have dog festivals out there and the, you know it's just it's a just real crazy thing but that was definitely culture shock and, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely so. culture shock so yeah and uh, are you a dog person I am uh, yeah, an animal lover. Okay. For sure. Oh, sure. That yeah. So I got huge. involved after that. I, after I saw that, and that wasn't the only city like that. But after I saw that, I made it a point to put together um, big events, fundraisers to stop the dog festivals. And we stopped it, not, not just me, but I teamed up with other mm-hmm. uh, organizations and we were able to stop um, seven of the do- big dog festivals mm-hmm. out there. So, and I, st- I still um, want to contribute and, and, and help stop these dog festivals because yeah, it's not yeah. just happening in Asia, but there's different parts of the world where they do that. But yeah, yeah that's definitely some culture shock for sure. So yeah. what does that trend look like then for dog festivals? Like, is it like a big thing where that's an everyday thing or people there locally, like you said, grassroots folks, like stopping that trend. And now like, as I guess civilization is progressing in China, is there less uh, dog festivals going on? Or where do you say that lies no, there, in their there culture? There are less dog festivals going on and it, it's big events that happen. And that's what they do. I don't yeah. need to go into detail, mm-hmm. but that's pretty crazy. And, yeah. Uh, and um, but yes, if there's enough people on a petition or community uh, that that uh, you know go against this, then they mm-hmm. will stop the. They'll cancel the dog festival. You know. So it's probably one reason why they don't like Americans. Some of them because <laughs> <laughs> going over there and trying to change like what they are used to. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, and the way it was put to me, a lot of China folk, anything that uh, any insect, animal, mammal that's back faces the sun is fair okay. game. Oh, eat it. So, if, well, okay. <laughs> if their head faces the sun, us humans, maybe monkeys or whatever, uh, yeah. don't eat it. But everything else is fair game. It's just monkeys and humans, I think. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, are there bugs? Like, it, say, say a bug's not back isn't facing the sun they can't eat that i i, I don't know that's just how it was explained <laughs> to me and that's crazy that's how it was explained to me and yeah. i was like hmm interesting you know? yeah, yeah yeah i'm curious uh you, you have all these skills that you've learned and i'm sure it takes time to get really good at all of them you were a professional dancer it sounds like at first that sounds like it was your first love yeah and then obviously got into djing and then like so many other things right you said graffiti you said tattoo artists like event production i'm an event organizer as well it took me a lot of time and fails to get really, really good. Just that one trade. Yeah, yeah. So how do you attribute all those different things? And, and I guess taking the time to get so good at all of them. Um, I think <laughs> ADHD helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, really, I, I can, I can never slow down. I'm always go, go, go. And, and I'm sure it annoys a lot of people, <laughs> but, um, but no, I, I think that's what helps me. Honestly, um, I'm, I've always been able to function off of very little sleep mm-hmm. and I've always been able to, um, well, multitask as best as, as I could possibly do that. And also if I get involved in a passion, it's a passion. So I really do take my time to learn it to the best of my abilities and continue to learn it throughout year after year, season after season. And, um, and yeah, the best way to learn sometimes is, you know, trial and error. So I try to remember those fails and, and try to just get better in each one of those elements 
But yeah, like I said, ADHD does really <laughs> help um, because um, I think a lot of individuals with ADHD, you yeah. know, it's hard for them to just um, focus on one thing and stay with one thing. Right. So if I can't just just focus on one thing, I could always juggle back and forth within those elements, and it keeps me um, sharp sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I hope. And um, but uh, but yeah, I I think that does have something to do with it. Um, yeah, because I'm always go, 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 go in all of those elements. And I think if I did not actually have ADHD, then I wouldn't be um, <laughs> as successful in some of these elements. As yeah. silly as that sounds, yeah. Well, if you think about like anybody who's been really good at something, they've always had chapters of their life that like they're known as like, that's Rocky Ross, the dancer. Like that was what you're known for. Uh, yeah. And that's Rocky Ross, the DJ. And like any big, I mean, even Elon Musk, you know, he was the PayPal guy at one point. He mm -hmm. was just the Tesla guy at one point. But uh -huh. now he's you know, maybe he's the SpaceX guy now, whatever it might be. Yeah. They have different phases of their the lives. Guy. Yeah, yeah, the Twitter guy. Now he's the yeah. X guy, right? Yeah. So I think that has a lot to do with it. And so for you, like if you're looking back at your life so far, you're young still, but like, what do you think you're most notably so known for? Very, very young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. You look great. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think you would be no, uh, known for at this point? Or what do you want to be known for rather? Um, that is a good question. I do not know what I want to be known for. Um, I want to be known as a good guy and a hard worker and a smart worker and someone that's created a lot for a lot of people and went above and beyond the standards and um, really brought some original, you know, um, awesomeness to communities and people around the world. That's what I want to be known for, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can't really pick one of those elements. I mean, yesterday... Um, sat down at uh, the Urban Egg for breakfast and nice. sat down for some folks. And I was, you know, sat at the bar uh, and did the, is this seat taken yeah. thing? And yeah. uh, it was two individuals. <laughs> and they're like, no, you're, you're good. And then we did the double take and, and we recognized each other from back in the day type of thing. And I was like, nice. I was like, hey, uh, what's your name again? And, and he said, John. And he's like, the, the break dancer. This is the OG break dancer. Uh -huh. yeah. Rocky, the OG break dancer. That's how they remembered me and then they're like you dj too blah blah but they they knew me as as the og break dancer is what they said but yeah i run into people all the time and they're like you're the tattoo artist you're <laughs> you're the dj you're the guy that restores vehicles you know whatever you're the guy that throws events and stuff so that's all fine i, I love it i love that too because and the, the, that reminds me of how hard i worked for that specific element or phase of my life mm -hmm. so that's kind of cool to run into people and then say you're you know you're you're the, you know the dan the dancer or the dj or whatever so it's kind of cool here's another question that yeah so you do a lot of things and you always seem to be motivated to be producing more and and uh, creating an impact creatively in our community whatever community you're in what drives you um <clears throat> well i the passions i i i, I thoroughly love turntablism and mixologists mixology mm -hmm. that's awesome uh, and, and, and DJing I, yeah. I thoroughly love artwork and tattooing thoroughly love producing events getting the community together and spreading the horizons out there and creating um, you know amazing events I love working on vehicles and restoring old or busted up vehicles and making them look new again um, and um, that's what keeps me going and, and, and want, I want to progress in all of those because how boring it, it, would it be to do the same formula every day and just be nothing wrong with that. But in my eyes, that uh, takes the purpose of the passion out to be a mediocre DJ or a mediocre dancer or whatever um, for the rest of your life or the rest of your career or that season. I, that, that doesn't sound too interesting or fun really but to learn something new it's like oh check out the check out this new routine i got check out this mm -hmm. this new event this new venue i got check out this new team i just put together like that's fun that's cool yeah that keeps it exciting you know yeah, yeah. and it seems like for you like the entrepreneur blood like runs only not only through you but it sounds like in your family as well do you have other entrepreneurs in your family as yeah. well yeah 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 i definitely look up to them big time um a few of them would be my older brothers uh mm -hmm. clayton ross He's a amazing individual. Uh, he owns Shop Yobel, which is right around the corner here mm -hmm. on Bijou, here downtown Colorado Springs. Um, it's a fair trade uh, boutique. They sell everything from head to toe, men's and women. 
Uh, is that what you got? Where you got what you're wearing right now? Yeah, this is Shop Yo Bell. That's, um, that's awesome. These jeans are Shop Yo Bell. Yeah, looks, most of my gear is Shop Yo Bell these days. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it's all fair trade. So every item that you see in the boutique, uh, they have a wonderful story, and, it, and it's all fair trade, right? And then also uh, the Look Up Art Gallery, with mm-hmm. the, which is inside of uh, Shop Yo Bell. Um, he um, basically walk in and look up, and it's art gallery on the ceiling. Uh, so uh, he owns that, and he is just an incredible artist, incredible painter, and just an incredible individual. He used to be a pastor of his own church, grassroots church. What? Just a really good person, him and his wife, Emily Ross. Um, they both own that together and run that together, and they're always doing really creative things and events out over there. I DJ over there for the first uh, Friday uh, art walk. Um, Nice. Inside their shop, they do an event there, and they serve my other brother's whiskey, Axe in the Oak whiskey, over there. So doing shout outs for them. Um, so that's Clay. He's he's amazing. My other brother is Casey Ross, and he is a beast of a hard worker and the best guy you'll ever meet. He's just an incredible individual. Um, always trying to be um, a little bit more like him. He's incredible. So yeah, he's uh, one of the main owners of Axe in the Oak whiskey distillery that's based out of here in Colorado Springs. Mm-hmm. Um, they have Axe and the Oak Whiskey House down at the Ivy Wild Building. It's great uh, stuff. Where Bristol Brewery is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. You've had it? Oh, yeah, Wonderful. for sure. I'm a big whiskey guy, so I love right. that stuff. Yeah, Awesome. So they have lots of products there, and they've really just exploded uh, all over the place now. They have their whiskey in different countries now, and of course, nice. all over America in different cities. Uh, they also recently expanded to uh, Arkansas. Uh, I heard that. Because they kept trying and trying to find a, um, a great warehouse space to expand here in Springs and it's just, you know, it's pretty difficult to find spaces, especially these days. So, um, a lot more opportunity for that out in Arkansas. So they expanded with a massive warehouse out there, which is going to be great for Colorado Springs because it's going to give Colorado Springs a lot more jobs because they could produce, uh, loads more whiskey Mm. coming in and loads more jobs coming in, uh, here Mm -hmm. to Colorado Springs. So, and the revenue for the tax probably comes out of that or does it i don't know how that works uh, i'm not quite sure okay. but yeah. but i know it's a great thing for colorado springs uh you know some people are, were thinking like well they're moving to another uh city that's bad for springs you know it's great for springs and he's always back and forth so i just want to give them shout outs awesome. as well mm-hmm. uh, my sister mikkel uh, adopted younger sister mikkel she uh owns her own massage um uh spot here downtown Go ahead. Um, that's yeah. awesome we'll pop up the instagram right here <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but yeah. And then, and my, my folks, my, my mother, hardest working lady I've ever met. She's been retired for years, but, um, she grew up working a horse ranch and working on mushroom farms and laying carpet with my father and, and always had several jobs and just, uh, a great mother. Um, so she's, uh, you know, very inspiring and sweet lady, Jan Ross. And they all here? Yep. Yeah. Here in Colorado Springs. Uh, my father also nicest guy you'll ever meet um and super hard working individual he's retired now but he's done all types of uh jobs growing up mostly uh flooring but just a wonderful individual um so yeah super inspiring um but yeah great family lots of lots of cousins and friends that are also family that are entrepreneurs that are very inspiring so yeah have a, definitely have some good circles that that i'm very lucky to have how's it fail coming back i feel like it's probably like a full circle thing because i feel like you've lived multiple lives you know in hollywood and asia like all the different things that you've done and then here you are landing back in your hometown and like you're back with your family they're doing great it sounds like as well how has that feeling been for you the past few years being home again yeah that part of it has been absolutely wonderful yeah um you know when when uh you know happens all the time siblings and family members move away for whatever reason and um and yeah, sometimes you get a little homesick or you miss the your family members and siblings, and, which I did. You know, it was over 20 years I was away, although I came back every year to visit. But to, to permanently be here again and and calm up, let's go have some cigars and, and whiskey or let's just hang out or whatever, barbecue, that's wonderful. So I didn't have that for so long. So that's great. Although, uh, you know, we find ourselves getting so busy now that we live in the same city, uh, the first few years we're seeing each other a lot and now we're everyone's so busy again it's like back to the usual grind mm-hmm. but uh but yeah it's it's been great overall for sure but definitely have to um make more time for family all of us do you know it's i think every, a lot of families are like that you know just get busy and can't see that well you have you guys have thing. different families and kids now too yeah, yeah i'm curious to hear like 
how does like discussion over like the Thanksgiving table? Cause you guys have so many things going on. Do you guys talk about that? Like when you all get together or is it kind of like, you yeah, know, yeah, just family and you know, sibling yeah, stuff. I mean, and- I think when, it, when it, exciting new things uh, happen with one, one of our businesses or journeys, uh, of course, that's fun, fun to share that at the table. Otherwise, there's not too much talk about business, which kind of just mm-hmm. quality time type of thing. Yeah. yeah. Probably because you're, you're thinking about business all year round. Yeah. So it's like, yeah that's that probably too. like a break maybe. <laughs> that, that too. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. guys have a spot that you go to, like, obviously you're all in the Springs, but there's like a place in Colorado outside of Colorado Springs that you guys go to as a family or that you've been to as a family kind of unplug? Um, Not necessarily, but my father is building a, a family cabin right now uh, in nice. Buena Vista. Oh, that's so oh, that's going to be a, a great new family um, getaway for us all. So yeah, we're looking forward to that. Yeah. Oh, that's really slick. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. So there's, I mean, there's some, this has been such a good interview. This is, you've had so much fruitful things for us for sure. So thank you so mm-hmm. much for coming on first of course, and foremost. Yeah. But we want to know for me. Um, what's next for you. You know, you're back home. You've done a whole lot of stuff in your life. It sounds like there's probably even more to come for you in your life, but we want to know like what's next for Rocky Ross. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for many years now, I've been trying to open up venues. All my close friends and family members know I've been trying to open up venues. Um, it's, uh, I've worked very hard trying to open up venues and for whatever reason, there's always been some red flags on the other side that uh, even after signing a lease or even after, uh, making the deal happen and starting to buy the, the light fixtures and the interior decor, uh, for whatever reason, there was always some type of red flags that put a damper on it and squashed the deal. So that is definitely something I'm still pursuing and still will definitely do. I want to bring some really creative, cool, unique culture and venues to Colorado Springs here. Um, so that is definitely on the the list of priorities that that I'm working on. Um, and then there's just side businesses that I'd like to continue to open on this on the side. You know, I used to have a a painting company. I don't paint or anything anymore, but I respect and I know the business uh, uh, enough to start up a side business again. So mm-hmm. I'll start a painting company and, and kind of have someone run that. And then the restorations, you know, recently started mm-hmm. that, you know, through the COVID period, the RR restorations, um, restoring vehicles. I want to get a little bit more creative with that and start going back into the classic cars again and uh, doing some classic car restorations. So I want to get that going, get a, you know, where we have some makeshift uh, garages and I'm renting out a buddy's backyard basically uh, with a two car por- port over there. So there's a workstation <laughs> down the street over here and a workstation at the other house over here. So we're doing, we're getting that going, our restorations and we're buying and selling vehicles and restoring other people's and whatnot. So I want to get that going as well. Um, and then uh, lastly would be, you know, um, restoring and flipping houses. So yeah, definitely want to get into that as well on, on the yeah. side, but build teams for it. So I mm-hmm. still have time to stop and smell the flowers and spend yeah. a lot of time with my daughters and family and friends. Um, a big believer in work hard, play hard. So I yeah. like to do that. So I yeah, think, those are some side side things that I'd like to dive into soon. Awesome, man. Yeah. I think with business, I mean, the whole goal is to like grow a business to where you can eventually can run itself. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's not everyone's goal, but I mean, that's, I think, if you don't want to be caught up and you know, essentially just buying yourself a job essentially or owning a job is what they'd like to say. Yeah. Uh, Cause that's how, that's how it can get. You can get so caught up in it. It's like, you're so, so in the weeds. I think the goal should be to like, you know, you could build a painting company because you know how, how it works and then you can have other people running it. Like you said. And yeah, that's, that can, that could be the goal. That's how you can have all these different things is that's the only way you could really have all these different things actually. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that's, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um... Yeah, definitely want to continue building teams, mm-hmm. great individuals and uh, opportunities for people. Yeah. So what would Rocky Ross today tell younger Rocky Ross getting out of, you know, graduating Lawson High School back in the day? What would be some key like words of advice for that version of you? Mm, that's a really good question too. Um, um, I guess learning how to prioritize better and um deal with deal with this adhd mm-hmm. better because <laughs> there's 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 multitasking there's sloppy multitasking and there's just scrambling and not knowing what what you're doing and and you're messing everything up 
Because mm-hmm. if you don't breathe through each of those these elements, if you have several, and you're just going to try a little bit here, try a little bit here, try a little, well, what did you get done at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. Nothing. You messed up a lot of things. But learning how to like kind of breathe through it, focus more. And if you're going to uh, have lots of things and multitask, learn how to multitask correctly, or at least better. So that helps. <laughs> I feel you on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have ADHD myself, so I understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got. I mean, I I have to keep myself busy too. You know, like I've been doing like uh, the animation stuff, which is a whole different. Amazing, beast. Yeah, by the way. Thank you. Incredible. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, which is very fun. You know, and like I get really do a, into do that. a clip of what you do on this. Uh, but right now, 3D animation is very complex. It takes a lot of different skills all into one. It takes so many fundamentals of different aspects of art. Usually, there's a team of people that are working and like the rigging, and then you got someone sculpting, which is a whole nother skill, and then you got video editing, you know? Like, it's a lot harder to do now, but it may actually end up with AI be easier than actual video editing. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, drop a clip. yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone back at you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and yeah, those those that's been really fun fun to do, and I get so lost into that. But then that I don't know how to monetize it yet. Really, I mean, I I could try to figure that out, but it's like I'm, I'm I can add that into what I do, and that's that was yeah. ultimately the goal, uh, and is ultimately the goal is to have that be part of what I the service that I offer when it comes to video production because animation is video. And it's just a different kind of video production. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, super time consuming. It looks like. Yes, yes, it yeah. is. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, it's just it's just like you know, painting. You know, like or 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 any other aspect of art. You know, like you gotta you gotta put in a lot of time to to get it right. But yeah, so I I get caught up with all these other things, and it's like I'm I'm glad that I've spent the time to do that. But now I'm focusing on just like getting the video, getting one product and one service for my video production mastering that and getting and drive and getting that to a million in revenue just that one product and then once i get that mastered and you know like have have that that history of it then i'll expand to other things so that's how i'm trying to do with my adhd is like focus on one thing yeah until it's right <laughs> yeah yeah no that's that that's yeah. <laughs> that's smart yeah what you know whatever works for everyone has such different minds and, and like so whatever works for you for sure, yeah. man. Yeah. And it's, I think it changes every like season and every year. It does, yeah. Like how your mind and body operate mm-hmm. towards e- even the same profession you've been doing for a long time. Things change a lot and you have to we have to learn how to adapt with all these changes. Yeah. Well, there's one final question I want to ask before we wrap things up, but I think this is really cool cuz I feel like you've been able to master both and it's really cool to see cuz for me like I've always been more business mindset over like the creative mindset. So I've always like latched on the creatives and then we've built things together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found that it's great for the creative too, because the creative just wants to create. They yeah. don't necessarily want to do the sales or the business and negotiations or the accounting. Yeah. How for, so for those folks out there who are listening to you and like, Oh my gosh, like I'm exactly like him. Like I have all these things I want to do art wise, artistic. I'm very artistic, very, I'm a creative. Mm-hmm. Like what can they do to get plugged into get really dialed in on like the business front. So they don't need to have someone like me partner with them. They can do it on their own. They can learn the skills themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think a lot of it is, is obviously out there online. You can find anything online and videos and training things as well as trying to pull in a, a mentor, you know, good friends asking good questions. Um, but also I think even before that they have to have the right mindset. So, if you if you if you have a passion and you want to do that passion, but you only like this part of the passion, it's not going to work. You have to you have to learn to enjoy the whole package, the whole task. You know, mm-hmm. it's like making spaghetti without any spaghetti sauce. Like it's like making you know a, a recipe, but you're using half of the ingredients. Well, it's going to turn out like shit, right? Yeah. So you got you to gotta learn to enjoy and use the entire package, the whole recipe, the formula, the system. And I think a lot of people just, they don't, they don't understand that going into their, their passion. And they need to really understand that before they actually invest the time, money, and energy. Because otherwise, they're probably going to fail. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on. This has been such a great episode. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. 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 This is great. Wrap us up, brother. This has been awesome, by the way. Yeah. Um, check out Rocky Rocky Ross. Uh, just just search up that. You'll probably find him. I'm just kidding. No, what's <laughs> it? Rockyrossproductions.com, right? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, uh, Rocky Ross Productions is more so my DJ website. Okay. Uh, you could find me on uh, my Instagram. I'll let you do a pop-up of my Instagram yep. <laughs> um, for my tattoos and artwork. And then you could also do uh, my DJ Instagram mm -hmm. for my event production and my DJing and my Ross Squad DJs. Um, and we will also give you another link for our our, our restorations, uh, which we do restorations on vehicles. Uh, car detailing, and um, yeah, things like that. Yeah, yeah. So this has been great, um, and we'll see you guys on the next one. All right. Thank you. Flip it. That was great. That thank was you, great. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.